Handy Patch Road, which is close to the Buffalzook boundary as well as obviously the Simma Mili boundary. So we're going to try and get that side. But I believe that there's elephants also around, so it's a recipe for absolute chaos going that side. So trying to make my way as fast as possible. But I think possibly Tamba and Hosano are in the same place again because there's tracks for a young male coming from Twin Dam side, I mean from Weaver's Nest side, which is where Hosano was last seen. And then there's tracks for Tamba all over the place. And they literally, you walk any of the pathways in that area and it's just leopard track, leopard trap, leopard trap. It's really quite difficult to kind of follow what's going on and they go back and forth all over the place but the monkeys like I say in the Franklins were going absolutely crazy so there definitely is a leopard there it's just a matter of trying to find it's a little bit later we'll have to maybe ask Herbie and Ali to do a bit of tracking team in that area and see if they can manage to find it Now I'm trying to, like I say, race to get there as quick as possible. Unfortunately, I probably chose the worst road for these bolsters. These bolsters are absolutely massive. But once we get onto quarantine and then towards Vuitella access, we're gonna be absolutely fine. Then we can open up a little bit and use our gears to the best of our ability, so. But all very exciting. It's amazing what can happen in a morning. It was quiet, quiet, quiet. Nobody had anything. There was no sign of anything on Puffelzook or Torchwood. Everybody's been kind of looking. And now all of a sudden we've got a situation where we've got wild dogs chasing things around, elephants, tracks for leopards, monkeys alarm calling. It's all just going crazy. Out the way, Dove. Beep, beep. James, uh, the wild dog and leopard, you say yes, but hopefully they stay separate. Well, I, I would imagine they would, although here's tracks for the, uh, tracks for the male line. But um, yes, they, they I think will stay um, separate given that the leopards are somewhere down on the Mulawati and these dogs are up near Sandy Patch. Right, let's see. I believe they're on Sandy Patch somewhere, so Hopefully I'll be able to find them and hopefully we'll have signal. It's often an area where we get a bit of issues But I'm hoping that given that we're in rusty things will be better. Senzo you're still on there. You're still alive Senzo is just smiling behind me holding on with this face of absolute terror as we're driving around So we're trying to get over all of these bumps and race our way that way now this will be the first dogs I've seen in I don't, oof, maybe three months since the last time I saw dogs. Maybe even longer. I know that Taylor's seen them and Byron seems to get fairly lucky with them. But I haven't seen dogs in quite some time. So looking forward to catching up with a pack again and getting to see them. It's always nice and hopefully this is a pack that's got little puppies with them because we haven't seen puppies for quite some time and they are just coming out of their denning season and so most of them should have little puppies with them so let's hope that there are puppies there and hopefully it's not the three dogs because well if it's the three dogs the chances of us catching up with them is pretty slim at this rate so hopefully we'll get them we're not far from Sandy Patch now, we're just going past Aubrey's and so it's the next road to the right and we should be able to be there. Sure, it's a racing drive to get here. <laughs> Yep, the ultimate definition of Ferrari Safari, as Lou says, is most definitely wild dogs, for sure. They always get things going, and I can see them. There they are, right in front of us, and it looks like they do have a kill, so, which is excellent news. I don't know what they've killed, but there is a number of dogs here. I don't even know how many. There's a lot, though. How cool is this, guys? <laughs> I just want to get a little bit further forward so that we've got a nice, open, clear view of the dogs. There's a bit of mating going on as well. So you can see blood all over them. They've obviously had a kill somewhere. They're not feeding now, but they 
obviously have had a kill and now it's play mode and when they play like this it is the best thing to watch we are super lucky guys this is one of the most endangered predators in the world and so we are fortunate to be able to get a view of them which pack this is i'm not 100 percent sure it looks like it could be the investec pack i'm just trying to count how many adults there are so i think it is the investec pack i'm not 100 percent sure it's been a while since I've seen them, so I'm just trying to recognize some of these individuals, but I think it is them. It's, I just love, though, when they're in this mode. After they've killed its coolish weather, they go into complete play mode, and there's jumping all over each other, kind of go crazy, and sort of, it's games and playing, and up on their back legs, and it's all just super exciting. And, and like I say, to see these guys is as special as it gets. I know some people don't like them because they say they're ugly and that they are vicious and they are ruthless, but they are amazing animals. The, the ability to do what they do and, and the way that they do it really is just phenomenal. And I actually quite find, find them quite endearing. I like the way that they look. They've got these kind of funny markings all over them. No two dogs are the same. It's, I, for me, the best kind of animal in just in that it's the way that it goes about its business is always just chaos it's never a situation where things are quiet and tame it's just absolute pandemonium with dogs all the time as you can see for us, us trying to get you and now even with them kind of after a meal you would expect somebody like a leopard or a lion will lie down and flop over and that will be the end of it but dogs it is now play mode they're running around chasing each other they're jumping on one another it's all just fun and games at the moment so it's the best part about dogs is that they are just constantly busy with something and there's constantly play going on and <laughs> that one's mating the other one's head that's not ideal whoopsie the ones in the back there are a little confused unfortunately <laughs> no no you've got it all wrong other way around poor female it's a... <laughs> not ideal i don't think anyway maybe uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the less said about what's going on in the background there, the better at this stage. But, <laughs> but the rest are at least playful and having such a good time. It's, look, I love when they go on their back legs like that. It's my favorite thing. When you get dogs up on their back legs, it really is super cool. They kind of play and they jump and they go crazy. And it's, it always looks like they're just having the best time when they're doing stuff like this. So I'm so glad we caught up with them and, and that they are playful in this particular section. And it looks like at least that they're going to go semi, semi quiet now, at least sit down for a bit. Although we know with wild dogs, they can go from sitting to standing in the space of about two seconds. But there must be a female that's coming into estrus. Look at this one that's trotting. Number of males here that are chasing the females around. So I wonder if there's not a female going to estrus. Maybe this pack is going to den much much later than some of the other packs because they sniffing her there's a number of males like I say looking and interestingly enough these wild dog females sometimes will mate with multiple males even though there's an alpha system I was talking to Grant the other day who's the, who studies the dogs in the Kruger system and he was telling me how they've done tests and there are multiple different males that are producing cubs in the area well in the specific sort of den and and within the 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 pack that's been breeding so it's quite interesting just to see how it all goes proud cat mama yes they can hear incredibly well those big ears are designed to pick up sound you can see how they move just like the elephant's ear it's like a satellite dish and it's picking up a lot of what's going on and the reason why they have to hear so well is because remember they split apart when they're hunting so they've got to be able to contact call and hear themselves and and hear each other and then also when they're hunting they're quite low to the ground so they're not very high up and that means that those ears are able to pick up sound around them so really cool these poor females are having a really tough time the males are literally just mounting any female that comes past them they're jumping on her so she they're all having a oh geez it's this yeah it's not going well boys are not knowing what's happening at this stage they're all a bit confused as to which way they're supposed to be mating <laughs> there we go that's better well done no she's not interested in mating with you yet so it's in it's really intriguing behavior i wonder if there isn't some males that have joined this pack and they're trying to now mate with the females 
to try and kind of establish themselves but you can see there's at least three or four different males that are mounting females in different places and there's lots of different females that are being mounted now i doubt that all these females can be in heat but like i said it could be new males to the pack males do move around quite a bit particularly in this breeding season oh he's going for it he's going for gold she seems to be far more tolerant of that male mating than the other one it's all very awkward this morning <laughs> Campion Jews, mommy, no, it's not only the alphas that mate. So the female wise, yes, she'll be the primary individual that mates. Once she's fallen pregnant, sometimes a beta female will also reproduce and will also mate with some of the males. So you can have a situation where two females go at it and we'll be able to have the cubs. Oh no, what is going on here? Boys, you need some education and females, See, I think she's trying to push him away and trying to keep him from mounting her from behind and that's why we're getting this awkward mating but in terms of males you'll find that actually multiple males will mate with the female it does happen generally the alpha male is the one that will try and mate the most but it can happen in a situation particularly in a pack where you've got new males that have joined there's no real defined alpha male structure you'll find that the multiple different males can mate with those alpha and beta females so if you look here there's two different dogs mating at the same time so you can see very clearly that it's not just one male that is trying to mate you there's multiple different males that are trying to mount these females i don't think they're possibly mating fully but there is definitely multiple males that will mount the females and will try and breed with them so it's it's a bit of a myth that only the alpha male will breed with females it there is other males that do as well try their luck obviously the alpha will try and stop that as much as possible but if he's mated himself silly then you will find a situation that other males will come in and start mating too it's late in the season though for these guys to be mating although there have been recorded cases of puppies being born in october so and november so it is possible but it is very late for mating to be taking place I, I'm almost of the opinion like I say that there's new males that have joined and they're trying to assert themselves more than anything else it's not that these females are actually in an Easter cycle because you can see the females are not allowing it to take place if they were want if they were actually in an Easter cycle and they wanted to mate did you see that dog was carrying the other one off its feet <laughs> Oh, this is ridiculous. There's dogs that are carrying each other around. It's just all over the show. And there we go. So, if they were in heat, you'd find the females would actually allow the males to, to penetrate and to be able to actually mate properly, which is what we're seeing here is not happening. They are trying to avoid actually mating with these boys as much as possible. It's a very awkward situation this morning. It's a very awkward sighting, but highly entertaining nonetheless and well i'm not going to lie i've had a chuckle at a few moments this morning already in these wild dogs <laughs> they've certainly been quite entertaining alita the males and females it's it's not easy when they're younger but basically the males often get a thicker collar of fur around the head area also their genitals are quite easy to see just look underneath their legs you'll find the males are very visible and then the females often their teats are quite visible so it's a little bit easier to see the males than it is the females but once you've seen a couple males and then and you in real life it's actually quite simple to see the difference between the two also the females tend to be a little slighter than what the males are they tend to be able to you know have thinner necks thinner bodies and slightly slightly more petite than what the females I mean the males are and I'm gonna go forward a bit just so that I can get a better view of all of them oh still more mating so how many have we got you I haven't even counted yet one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen it must be the investec pack if there's 13 of them it must be then the investex and so I'm curious if this pack den i need to find out from grant if they did den i thought they denned in the manuleti some i mean in the manuleti but obviously there's no puppies here whatsoever and they would be of age if they did den that they would be able to start actually running and start actually um moving with the pack so i'm very surprised there must have been Either they lost their puppies and there's a potential that they might breed again. That also can happen with wild dogs. If they lose their puppies, they sometimes will have a situation where they can breed again um, if conditions are favorable and food items are available. So it is possible. These poor females, they are being absolutely hounded by these males. 
can't be comfortable. Imagine having a situation where you literally have to chase males off all the time. And it's two females in particular that are the ones, in fact now there's a third female also trying to be mated from the front. So there's just, it's an absolute mess. Boys, you are not behaving this morning. You are all over the stage. <laughs> But look at this, you see how they're chasing them, trying to wear them down, and whether or not they get it right is anyone's guess. At this stage, I don't think so. I think we're going to have a situation where the females are not going to give in. But there's literally, there's four different females that are trying to be mated with by four different males. And, well, you can see all the males have got it wrong this morning. Nobody's got it right. There goes a dog being carried off into the distance. <laughs> Shamsun, are you saying there's are there chances of the dogs denning on Juma? Shamsun, in all honesty, I think no. Um, given that this pack's core range is Manuleti Biffle's Hook, very seldom do we see it them down here in in Juma. So no, I don't think so. Um, but it, I suppose it is possible. Um, and in terms of gestation periods, it's a very very short gestation that they have. So they ha don't have a gestation period that is very long. And the reason why is because well, when the puppies are born, they're absolutely tiny. So and they are pretty useless and kept inside a den. So you find all denning animals. If you think of cats and the various others, that they will all kind of have very short gestation periods. So I will give you the exact number now of the gestation I just want to double check it but I think it's two and a half months but I just want to make double sure it's not a little bit earlier than that so if you give me two seconds there we go of course now the information that I'm looking for there we go 69 to 73 days so it's very very short period it's just over two months two and a half months is how long they gestate for so it's a very short thing and if they did let's say fall pregnant now we would be then looking at basically the end the end of november just into december which is very very late in the season for wild dogs but it is all very messy at the moment like i say it's isn't this is an adult show that they are putting on this morning and not even a good one either it's just all over the place there's dogs mating with one another and <laughs> amateur hour exactly Lou it is amateur hour you can see he's trying to mate with her she doesn't want anything to do with it she's bucking and bronking and she's trying to stay away from him but <laughs> she's got no chance as long as their males are around it's going to be a case that they are going to be followed and mated and pushed and prodded and all kinds of different nonsense that's going to be going on So Laurie and Jimmy, you're asking if they get, t is it tired, Lou? I think I heard correctly. Do the dogs get tired when they mate? I would imagine. So. Oh, tired, locked together. Ah, okay, there we go. Thanks. Sorry, I thought tired wasn't the right word. Uh, tired together. Um, No, not that I've seen. No, they, their mating is quick. It's much like the cats in, in that they mate very quickly. The females generally are not hugely impressed by it. But basically what they do is... The male will normally grip around the hips of the female and then he mounts her and, and, and mates with her like that. So the mating process is very similar to a dog in the way that they actually kind of come together but they end up really doing it quite fast. It's not a long drawn out process like you would see with dogs. They they just quicken and, and, and it's done and over. You can see he's basically trying to... Re wrestle it down but you also notice that unlike the cats the female needs to be standing he doesn't get it quite right if she's not standing you can see he's nowhere near he's just pretty much making do with dry air at this stage but he's going to have to wait for her to stand up the, the way that they mate he needs to have her up and she'll squat slightly and then they can lock on from there basically so i suppose they do lock on i suppose it's no no you've got it all wrong poor female this is just it's embarrassing for them you guys are not doing the male wild dogs proud at all today well so the implications of having late season young ones is that 
hunting becomes a lot harder and therefore providing food for the young ones is harder it's more difficult also they den in places like termite mounds or holes in the ground and so rain is a big problem it can often flood into those places and drown the the pups so that's that's some of the reasons why it's a huge issue to have dogs denning late in the season also like i say just food becomes a lot harder to catch than what we see in the sun in the winter months you know in the winter they can hunt close to water and they generally can find food very easily in summer things are a lot more spread out and the density of of food items maybe is a little bit less which makes it a lot harder for these guys to actually be able to find the nutrients that they need to sustain these puppies remember that puppies they can have you know 18 pups at once it's really a lot of puppies and it can be really very difficult i think the the record number of pups that's ever been born is 21 i think which can you imagine the 21 little ones that you have to look after you need the best possible conditions and the best possible amount of food in order to sustain that Oh, shame girl is he chasing you around so that's the male there you can see what i was talking about earlier with a thicker collar of fur as opposed to her look so you see her there she doesn't quite have as thick a bulky a neck so it's almost a bit of a main structure and slightly smaller than what the male is right well it seems as everybody else is going to rest there's still our awkward pair in the distance there and that everybody else is now sleeping and taking it very easy and is spread out which is fantastic news but while we enjoy these guys a little bit longer, let's go across to Brent with his fluffy little lion cubs.